after people had eaten food, after people had eaten, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, a heart to betray Jesus. Amen. Yes, this message or this passage comes after or the first verse of the chapter talking about Jesus coming to realize and to know that time had come for him to leave this world. Jesus had already realized that time had come for him to die. But as Jesus realized and came to know that it was time for him, verse 1 says, the last part of it says, Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. Amen. That is chapter 13, verse 1, the last part of it. Saying that Jesus loved his followers, loved his disciples until the very end of his life. Amen. Yes, uh, if we see the first verse of this chapter and the second verse, we can see that they are different, they are two very different things. The first one is talking about the love of Jesus. Jesus loving his people. Jesus loving his disciples, his followers. Even though he had realized that at that moment had come, time had come for him to 
died, but Jesus still showed a lot of love for his disciples. The Bible says that he loved them to the very end. So as Jesus was exercising, as Jesus was displaying the heart of love, Judas is carried. On the other hand, was showing something else. In Jesus' heart, there was a heart of love. But in the heart of Judas Iscariot, there was a heart of betrayal. As Jesus was thinking about, what can I do to save my people? What can I do to show my people, the people, the children of God, that I love them? On the other hand, Judas Iscariot was thinking about, what can I do to betray Jesus? These are two different hearts from two different people. But they were in the same place. They sat together on the same table, eating together, dining together, talking. Maybe they were even rejoicing, sharing a lot of things. But they had two different kinds of heart. One was thinking about love and another one was thinking about betrayal. I want us to read a passage, a different passage, so that we can be able to see why was Judas Iscariot having this kind of heart? Why was Judas having the heart of betrayal towards Jesus? The very same Jesus that had a heart of love for him why then was he thinking about betraying Jesus? Let's read the book of Mark, chapter 14. Mark, chapter 14. Mark, chapter 14, from verse 3 to verses 9. Mark, chapter 13, I mean 14. Mark, chapter 14 from verse 3 to verses 9. The Bible says, And while he was at Bethany, and while he was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at the table, a woman came with alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment would have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? For she has done a beautiful thing for me. Because you will always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, Whoever the gospel, I mean, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Amen. Yes, in the book of Mark, we can see Jesus in Bethany. And while Jesus was there, Jesus went to a house of a leper called Simon. Jesus went and he was dining in the house of this man. You know, as we have read from the book of John chapter 13 verse 2, it was saying that during supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. And in the book of Mark, it's also talking about the same name of the person. Judas Iscariot was the son of Simon. 
But again, you can see in the book of Mark, it's talking about the same name of the person. But this were true, this were not the same people. This Simon, who was the father of Judas Iscariot, is not Judas, it's not Simon. That was the leper. They were two different people. They were different people, but they have the same name. They have the same name. As we have read these two passages, one was talking about Judas betraying Jesus. Then the other one was talking about of an event that took place. And in this event, we can see that when Jesus was anointed, when a, when a very costly and a very expensive ointment was poured, was broken and poured on the head of Jesus, the Bible says that the heart of people that were there, they were troubled, they became indignant. Judas Iscariot was also there, being part of the disciples of Jesus. So when Judas saw that an expensive oil is wasted, the Bible tells us that their hearts were troubled. Their hearts were troubled. They became indignant in their heart. So it, is, it was at this point that this event took place that became a turning point for Judas Iscariot to go off from the way of love. It was the beginning of the evil thought in the heart of Judas Iscariot. So, the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 14 that, and while he was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, that is Mark chapter 14 verse 3, in the Bible says that Jesus was in Bethany, and while he was there, he entered the house of the leper. You know, in the ancient times, a person with sickness or with a disease of leprosy is cut away from the world. His people are left alone. No one wants to associate with them. Today we can relate to this kind of people very well. This season of pandemic, this season of coronavirus, if people sense that you have any sign of coronavirus, you are isolated. You are quarantined somewhere. You are left alone to live your life alone because people are scared. People are worried that you are going to infect others. And this was the kind of life that people with lepros were having in the ancient times. They were cut away from the world. So they died slowly, alone, without anybody tending to them. No one had love for them. But the Bible tells us that Jesus, as he was in Bethany, he went to the house of a leper. He went and he was dining with a person, the very person that people didn't like, the very person that people ignored, the very, the very person that people cut off from their lives. So instead of Jesus also staying away from them, instead of Jesus staying away from him, the Bible says that Jesus went to his house and he started feasting with them. Jesus went there and he was sitting with him on the same table. And this is the kind of heart that Jesus had. So the Bible tells us that the leper's name was Simon. A leper, a person with leprosy. What does it signify in our life? What does it reflect? What does it show in our life, in our spiritual life? Spiritually, it signifies a person who doesn't know love. A person 
who does not know love, a person that has no sense of love at all, a person that has no feeling for love. Even if you give, or even if you give such a person and show such a person love, the person is not able to recognize, to realize, or even to think about it. Such people are not able to recognize the love of God. Even if God comes with much love for them, even if God reveals a great amount of love for them, they are not able to sense it. They are not able to recognize it. And neither are they able to accept the love of God. Because they are spiritually dead. They have no love at all. And this is what we are to God. This is how we are before God. We are sick. We have that spirit. We are spiritually people that are sick with leprosy. We are not able to recognize the love of God. We are not able to sense the love of God. However much God shows us great love, still, instead of receiving and accepting this love of God, we turn away from the love of God and we seek for something else. We run away from the love of God. We fail to accept this precious love. And we can never show this love to someone because we have no feeling. We have no acceptance. And we have no recognition of the love of God. Spiritually, we are sick and we have this leprosy. We are spiritual lepers. So, a leper signifies the person who does, who does not know love. You know, the Lord showed amazing love unto us. God has showed us a lot of love, an amazing and deep love. God is searching and seeking out people that he can eat together with them, that he can sit together with them on the same table and rejoice. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, 18, the Bible says that God was God is calling people, saying, come and let us reason together. You know, you cannot come and reason together until you're seated together on the same table. You need to sit face to face with one another. And then you can talk. And this is what is happening in our life. God is seeking. God is looking for us. He's calling us to come and sit with me on the table so that we can eat together. But because we have no love, because we are lepers spiritually, we have no sense of recognizing the love of God, we cannot really experience this love of God. So, first of all, we need to be healed, like Simon was healed. Simon the leper was healed, and he was seated on the table with Jesus. The, like the leper was healed by the love, by, by love of Jesus Christ, we too, we need to be healed by the love of God. We need to be healed by the love of God. We need to test the amazing love of God. And we need to learn this true love. You know, every day people are singing, people are talking about love everywhere. If you read through the internet, you'll find people talking about love. If you listen to a song, whether a secular song or a gospel song, people are talking about love. But what kind of love is there? The love that is polluted, the love is that is diluted. There is no purity in that love. And Jesus, God is seeking for us to give us the true love. The love that when we receive, we can be healed, like the leper was healed. So, when we go back to our story, 
we could realize that the leper was healed by that great love of God. He had tested and he had learned of the true love of God. And when Jesus was in his home, they were reclining, they were seated together and talking together, sharing with one another. And as they were doing that, the Bible says, the woman appeared. The woman appeared. Amen. A woman appeared. Let us go back to Mark chapter 14 and we read from there. Verse, that, verse 3 of Mark chapter 14, the Bible says, And while he was at Bethany in the, in the house of Simon the leper, and he was reclining at the table, the woman came in with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nut, very costly, and she broke the, the flask and poured it over his head. Amen. Yes, one woman brought a very expensive perfume made of pure nut. Made of pure nut. And she broke the jar and poured it on the head of Jesus Christ. You know, a nut is a very valuable and essential oil that is extracted from the trees and other plants that are out there. It is very expensive, very costly. And when this woman came, she brought this oil with her. She brought the flask with her and she broke it and poured it on the head of Jesus Christ. But when this woman did this, the reaction of the people were not very good. The Bible says that people became indignant. People became disappointed. People became not very happy with what the woman did. Why did you do that? How can you do that? How can you waste such an expensive oil? How can you do that? So this woman displayed great love to you at Jesus. As the woman was displaying great love towards Jesus, some people some people were not happy about it. Some people were not happy about it. I have a mind, the woman was showing love. Others were not happy about it. They didn't want the woman to show the love that he had for Jesus. And the Bible says that the very people that were there, they were the disciples. They were the disciples of Jesus. They were the very followers of Jesus. They were the very people that proclaimed that they love Jesus. They walk with Jesus every day. They eat with Jesus every day. But when a gesture of love was done towards Jesus, the Bible says, they became very disappointed, very indignant. Let us read Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 and 38. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 37, 38 that, And behold, a woman of the city, who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at a table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Amen. Yes, you see, a sinful woman was weeping. She was crying. She was weeping. And while she was weeping, she wet the Lord's feet with her tears. As she was crying, tears were rolling down from her eyes. And the tears that were rolling down her eyes, she used it to wash the feet of Jesus. And as she was washing, as she wet the feet of Jesus, the Bible says, 
that she wiped the feet of Jesus with her very own hair. She didn't use any other kind of thing, but she used her own hair. I can't imagine. I know ladies love, they value their hair so, so much. I have two sisters and they value their hair so much. If you play, try to play with their hair, then you're in trouble. If you speak, speak or say anything about their hair, then you are in trouble. You can play with any other thing, but not the hair. But we can see the sinful woman, the sinner, she was crying. And while she was crying, she began to wash the feet of Jesus for the tears that were rolling down in her eyes. And while she washes it, she wiped it with her own hair. Then she kissed the feet of Jesus and anointed them with perfume. Amen. So Luke recorded these very specific details in his account. Luke recorded it very well that while she was doing that, people were not happy. While she was doing it, showing the love that she had for, for Jesus, they were not happy. And who were these people that were not happy? They were very own, his very own disciples, his very own people, his very own followers. So they were like, why do you have to waste this perfume? Why do you waste this perfume? Something which is very expensive. The Bible says that it costed 300 denarii. And 300 denarii is equivalent to the wage or salary for one full year for a person. So this woman broke an ointment, a perfume that costed her the salary of her whole life for the entire year. She had saved for the whole year and she bought a perfume to use. But instead of using it, she brought this perfume. She could have used, she could have used the perfume in very many days, but she broke it in one day and poured it at the feet of Jesus. She poured it on the head of Jesus. Why? It is as a gesture, as an act of love that she had for Jesus. This is the kind of heart that the woman was having. The heart of love. This woman, the Bible says that she was a sinner. But what kind of heart was this woman having? What is the difference in the kind of heart that the woman was having and the kind of heart that the disciples were having? The sinful woman really had love for Jesus. She had true love. Her heart was full of compassion for our Lord Jesus. That when she did what she did, when she broke the alabaster jar, The disciples were not happy about it. Why do you have to waste this? We could have sold it. And we used the money to care for the poor. Because we could have used the money to cater for some other people. So we could see that the disciples were betraying Jesus. They had a heart of betrayal towards their Lord Jesus Christ, their own master, their own teacher. So the betrayal of Judas came at this point. It started developing this, developing this heart of betrayal at the point where the, sin, the sinner, the woman came and showed great love for Jesus. As someone was showing love for Jesus, Judas started developing a heart of betrayal. After seeing this great love be portrayed by the woman, consequently, Satan took hold of the heart of Jesus. Satan captured the heart of Judas. Shall 
Satan took control, took charge of the heart of Jesus. That in the place where there was true love, where love was revealed, we can see that it is also very a very place where Satan carries his work. A place where the love of God is revealed. Satan also comes and carries out its work. So as the woman was showing great love, Satan took and captured the heart of Judas. Amen. So the truth is that if we misunderstand love, then Satan will seize our heart. If we try to misunderstand the love of God, then Satan will take that opportunity to seize us and begin to use us in an evil way. We might be in a place where the love of God is being revealed in a powerful manner. But when we misunderstand that love, then Satan will take that opportunity. The disciples misunderstood the act of love that the woman did to Jesus. So because of their misunderstanding, Satan seized the opportunity and took, he used it and turned the followers, the very believers of Jesus Christ against Jesus. They turn that love into betrayal. So, when it comes to love, it is very wasteful to give, you know. When it comes to love, it is not wasteful for us to give at all. We can give as much as we can. We can give our very best, and still it will never be wasteful. The woman gave our very best. She gave what she valued most. And as people were looking at it as a waste of time, as a waste of resources, to God, it was not a waste. Because it was true love. So like this, like the woman who broke the most precious thing in her life, Jesus also gave the most precious of all. Jesus gave his very own life. Jesus gave his precious life so that you and me, so that the world that is lost can find our ways back to God. That is why Jesus said, as people were thinking that it was a waste of time, as they were thinking that it was a waste of resources, Jesus said in Mark chapter 14 verse 9 that and truly I say to you wherever the gospel is proclaimed the whole world what she has done will be told in memory of her. This woman did and showed and revealed an act of love and Jesus said she will be testified in the whole world. And today we are here we are reading and we are learning about it. This gesture of love that the woman did. So the love that the Lord has given to us is called the gospel. The love that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us is called the gospel. But the love that was shown by this woman was the same as the love that was shown by our Lord Jesus Christ by dying on the cross. She gave the best. She gave the most precious thing in our life. What about you and me? What can we give? What is the most precious thing in our life that we are ready to give? Will it be our time? Amen. As Jesus has shown us the, the heart of love, he has revealed the great love of God by dying on the cross for us. What kind of response are we going to have? Jesus, God is calling us to sit with him together at the table. But what kind of heart are we going to have? Are we going to have the heart of betrayal like Judas had? Or are we are going to learn from our Lord Jesus Christ and from this story of the woman 
that really showed great love to Jesus Christ, that she gave her very best. Oh, we are going to be the people that are indignant, people that when we see love, we turn it into something else. We begin grumbling and we begin complaining. So I hope as we meditate on this, we can help, we can develop the kind of heart that the woman had, the heart of love, using our most precious resource to bring glory upon the name of God. As she broke the alabaster jar and anointed the feet of Jesus and poured the oil on the head of Jesus, I hope we can also learn from this, develop this kind of heart and receive the great love that God has given to us, learn from it, and also love others the way we have been loved. Amen. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we want to thank you for the love you gave us. Father, many times we fail to acknowledge, accept, and to receive the love that you have shown to us. Instead of receiving the love that you've given to us, Lord, we grumble and we become indignant. We are spiritually lepers, O oh God. I pray that, Father, through your great love, may you heal us spiritually. May you teach us how to be the people that love. Through loving you, we shall be able to love others. Through receiving your great love into our lives, we shall be taught how to love. And with a heart of humility, out of obedience, we shall be able to fully acknowledge and receive your great love for our life. And we shall begin to live in this love. Like the sinner, like the sinful woman, we shall come before you with our most precious resource. We shall offer a sacrifice of heart of obedience and love to you. And we shall be able to reveal your great glory through our life of faith. We thank you, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God bless you.